Get ready to hide in queue. What is up, homies? How are you doing? Rob is making weird hand gestures at me. I was trying to fly. Okay. Good job. Is my mic even on? Yeah, you're on. Hello, is this thing on? You're on, sir. He was real quiet last week. Was he? Yeah. Well, not this week. No, I not. wasn't. According to YouTube, you were. Welcome oh, quiet, to quiet. Keeping quiet. Crank me up, bro. Up with the Cardassians. This is Nick. This is Rob. This is Joe. And we are so happy to be back this week, the week before the Lions are in the Super Bowl. 27 unanswered, unanswered points. points. Fresh off of a 34-31 loss to the Niners, who coincidentally I'm now rooting for in the Super Bowl. Would if, you rather Would you rather the team that you lost to win the Super Bowl? Yes, because that tells me if I would have beat that team, I would have won the Super no, Bowl. No, I'd rather... You the, guys realize that we lost the Super Bowl that night, right? Yeah. Because we would have... Sm- I, I, be- I firmly we believe we would have smoked, smoked the cheese. Yeah, I totally believe it. Yeah, Taylor Swift and Eminem in a fist fight. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to take Eminem. Uh, yeah. But yes, welcome to Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Popularity? Take no, Taylor. we're not a sports podcast, but we are Detroit-centered, so we are we are all mourning the loss of our Detroit Lions. Hey, we told them last week. Yeah, we did. We did. We, we warned them. We warned you. But uh, yeah. this is a podcast where we talk about everything. Pop culture news, so sports, movies, TV shows, music, video games, uh, toys as well. I mean, all it's kinds true. of stuff. We talk about all that stuff. We, you know, we have a toy time sketch that we haven't done in a while. It's in it's in retirement. At it's the moment. in retirement, but we need it's a hiatus. We need a hiatus. New, we need a new we need a new uh, bit. We need, we need some new. Anyways, uh, right now we are working our way through a review of Star Trek: The Next Generation. We are in the first season, and so far it has not been too good for us. We have not really enjoyed it much at all. Uh, but today we have two more episodes: The Battle and Hide and Q. We will hit those up in the second half of this episode. The first half, though, is our time to catch up in pop culture news on what's going on. So is there anything in particular you want to talk about? I have one thing in particular I do want to talk about. I got about. a handful of notes, but you go first. Well, there, well, it's kind of all related to Star Trek. Excellent. So one is they started filming the Section 31 movie that's going to be on Paramount. Yes. My question, Thank you. My question is, it, No. does anyone care? I do. 734-494-0980. Call. Let yeah. us know. Do you care? Why do I care? Yeah, please. It's section 31. It's fascinating. I find I find it's it, you know what? It's something different with Star Trek. It's not That's the fair. same old same old. It's not rehashing uh stuff that we've already That's actually seen, a very good point. That's fair enough. seen or heard of from or you know, a new variation of a time it's something different and new. That and a- I am I'm open to that. And I remember I remember saying this on our rewatch of DS9, if you go back and listen, that they could do so much with Section 31. It, it's fascinating. So I'm interested to see what they do. It could be hot dog shit, but <laughs> it could be good. It could, it, it's a it's a at least a brief breath of fresh air into a franchise that really likes to go back to its mainstays a lot. So I think one of the problems for me is that the person who is the lead for this movie, she's incredible, Michelle, uh, Michelle, uh, what is her name? Obama. Michelle Yao. Yeah, yeah Michelle cool. Yao. She's the lead for it. Her character was from the Mirror Universe where she was an evil person in the Mirror Universe. Oh, yes. And then she comes to the Prime Universe and like the whole arc is like... Totally redeems herself. She tr- Yeah, but she's still kind of a jerk. Right? Oh, yeah. She's, um, a, she's a poopoo head. So the plot of this movie, the official description is tasked with protecting the United Federation of Planets. Georgiou must also face the sins of her past. Um, I, I just, I don't want a mere universe. The original captain version of her was really cool yes. in the first season and was dead by the end of the first episode, if I remember. Um, yeah. Cause uh, that's when, uh, what's her face took over. Burnham takes over. Yeah. She commits the mutiny. Yep. Right. Um, so, uh, spoiler and yeah, whatever. It's years ago now. Yeah. I'm not interested in the mirror universe version of that. I don't want to see the mirror universe characters being zany and like evil and redeeming themselves. I want to see the prime characters. I would like to see a prime character in 31 struggling with the fact that humanity has overcome its, its urge to be evil like section 31 and trying to fight its own organization while at the same time protecting the Federation. 
That's what I would like to see. But we're not going to get that. Ethan Hunt, Section 31. Right. I would yeah. I would be down yeah. for that. I would be down for that. I don't know. Um, I'll still see it because you made a good point. It's original content. It's not a rehash. It's not a remake. Yeah. It's it's an unexplored branch of Star Trek. Yeah. Man, Ron Barry would be rolling in his grave, though. Oh, yes, he would be. That they made a movie about Section 31. That they made Section 31 at all. Well, yeah, exactly. But that they're also emphasizing it now, right? Yeah, like, celebrating it. But you have an Academy Award winner who wants to do it, so why yeah. wouldn't you do that? That's a good, also a great point. Yeah, I mean, you. she won for everything, everywhere, all at once. I think she won the Academy Award for. So she deserves it. Like, give, give, give the woman... Give her her due. Give her her lead, man. Yeah. Let's see what she can do. Well, kind of coming, coming piggybacking on that, uh, Nick, you actually sent this earlier that there was an original idea for, for yes, Star Trek this movies. Is what I was going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, Noah Haley's original idea for Trek was a new crew, new okay. cast, starring Kate Blanchett. Uh, Blanchett. Ba- ba- Blanchett, sorry. Nailed it. And Rami Malek. Yeah. Um, Nailed that, too. I did nail that. It's Malek. Yeah. Whatever. Who cares? That's okay. It's who Fred, am, I, who Freddy, am I to correct I tell you? you. Yeah. <laughs> the balls of this guy. I know. It's Freddie Mercury. Um, yes. So, and Paramount didn't want to do it because it was too risky. I mean, they were far along in it. They were yeah, major they're casting. Pro- they were, yeah, production schedule. Now, was this was this a movie or a show? Or movie. A, okay. But a wholly original crew with Kate Blanchett and Rami Malek. Now, when you amazing. sent this. It would have been cool. That's why I asked. When you sent this, my thought was... Why do this with a movie? Would you if because you were it's to, Kate Blanchett? Yeah, because okay. you got you got some you got some gravitas. You got star power. If it's not star power, I don't think. But you like, do if that. you're if you're Paramount, especially at the Ragnarok, if yeah. you're Paramount, why would you rather launch a new crew with a movie or a, a series? I actually think I'd do a new movie because I think that's part of what the Star Trek fatigue is. People are sick of seeing the same exact people on the screen over and over again. I, I think you um, branch out a little bit. <laughs> Close Bl- the, blanch out. Blanch bl- out. I think you blanch out a little bit. I don't think there's harm in it, especially since they had star power. I think that's more of a draw mm-hmm. to a Lehman. Okay. Um, you know, of course, if it's done right, and I didn't know if it was Prime or or the alternate universe. That doesn't say. It doesn't say, but it could have been interesting. I'm going to guess that, um, uh, what was his name again? Rami Malik. Malik. I guess I'm going to guess he was the villain because he tends to be the villain and everything. I don't. I can see him being mm-hmm. a really good commanding, like a second in command. I I imagine Kate Blanchett would have been the captain. I would assume so. Yeah, yeah. But it could have been cool, man, because you kind of get a bunch of like B plus listers as the crew. Yeah, like you get Kate Blanchett as the the captain, him as the XO, and then you just fill in some like up and coming people that people know who they are, but they're still kind of yeah, you know, yeah, still kind of nobodies, but they're known at the same time. But it just shows that again, Paramount has no balls. Well, they they were undergoing a change at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, change sure in ownership. That, I'm not sure they're in a position to be risky. The, back then, they they probably were though, because all the Star Trek was kind of kicking with yeah. Strange New Worlds and all of that. I'm assuming this is actually more around the time after Star Trek Beyond, the last movie. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I think it was only like three years ago. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so when they really kicked it up into high gear. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Discovery came out, and all those other things came out. Okay. I think it was just too much, too much new Trek at the. To I just think you had Discovery, you had Picard, you had Strange New Worlds, you still had lower you had lower decks. Well, so you had Discovery, which was a new crew, right? Maybe yeah. not the most well received show, but it was a new crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You had Picard, which is a familiar character. I th- mm-hmm. and Picard season three wasn't around yet. Yeah, um, you, you were introducing Strange New Worlds, which, which is, is somewhere in between the two which, of those. Which is somewhere in between, but let's go with its more reoccurring characters. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Um, characters you know. Yeah. I don't see the harm in trying it. And, you know, Star Wars maybe didn't do the best job with it, Mm -hmm. according to some folks. Again, I don't care. But but if you do it well, if you do a Star Trek well with a new cast, and you maybe throw a bone out there mentioning the Enterprise here and there, and there you go. But do you think in their mind it was too... Because to me, I think that would be too much variety on screen. You have four Star Trek entities Mm -hmm. with four, four different groups. I think you release movies to try to get to a broader audience, though. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I think the plan there is the broader audience. You don't really care much about the television division at that part. And you're trying to kind of diversify. So hopefully that grows your television part. Do you think we've reached the point where the television 
where the the TV slash streaming audience and the movie audience isn't yes broader. It's yeah. it's more it's closed. It it's I, I do the, think the that, gap has closed. I do think that it has happened. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. A little bit at least. Yeah. Because the movie be on Paramount Plus in two months Eight anyway. Seconds, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's another way to even hype Paramount Plus too. New crew. This movie came out two months ago and watch it on Paramount Plus. Mm-hmm. Would have been. But they're not going to do it. Nope. 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 Uh, uh, the, the franchise is being sold anyway, so maybe they will do it. Maybe. Well, I, don't, I don't know. I think that When's, basically... When does this Paramount Garage sale have it happening? There's, there was rumors that it was going to be happening soon. Yeah, I'm know. a little out of the loop, so I'd have to catch yeah, up. Yeah. Why are you out of the loop? What happened? Uh, yeah, nothing. Where'd nothing. you guys go? You guys look tan. Do not, I? Not me. It was cloudy the entire time. I looked time. like I gained 20 pounds because that did happen. Uh, 11. Did you really? Yeah. I knew you guys looked fat. <laughs> uh, I already am, but uh, yeah. So pH was, 18, I assume? Yeah, pretty hot and tempting. Yeah. There was a lot of weight gain on that trip, man. The The night of the Lions game, okay, we were watching it. Rob and I went on a cruise together with our families, and Joe uh, <laughs> did not <laughs> go. Should have left the family part out. I know. Yeah. Rob and I shared a suite Yeah, together. it was nice. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm still and we, looking for my invite. But. We watched the Lions game in like their main room. Which is, was amazing, by the it was way. amazing. Um, and mm-hmm. Rob and I had a lot to drink, and their pizza was really good, so we kept Damn getting it. more and more pizza. I probably ate at least two large pizzas by myself that night. You Easily. realize saying this, this hurts my feelings more than you guys actually going on the cruise without me, the knowing pizza. that there was really good pizza. It was, and solid you were watching pizza. the lions. It was, and at, at one point, <sighs> like I was, you know, we were we were making friends with the people around us, and I got up to That's go. That's not get what pizza. I heard. And, <laughs> well, yeah, we also did not make friends too. Um, but I was go- getting to get some pizza, and one of the guys is like, "Hey, bring us some." So I'm like, "Sure." So I go to the pizza place, and you're only supposed to get it by the slice. And I'm like. Can I have just like a large pizza, just one whole large pizza? They're like, uh, I, I guess. <laughs> so I just kept loading up on the pizza. It was pretty fantastic. But anyway, we're keeping a drink tally until he cleared until the waiter cleared him out. Oh yeah, it was. Well, it's not bad. Whose is that? Both of us. Yeah. Uh, there was like, double stacked and things. There's, it's like twenty eight at one point. I think it was. It was bad. Mm. It was trash. I just you know. It didn't hurt until now. I had gotten over it. <laughs> it was, it's a pizza. I get it. I get it. We'll take you out. For I pizza had gotten tonight. over it. No, it's not the same. No, we were. Th- we'll take you for some Chicago style pizza. Uh, you, you know what? Just it's it's, it's the salt in the wound. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly oh. shifting gears here. Some Henry Cavill news. Two, Thank you. Two things. I'm in. Argyle is kind of bombed at the box office. I just I <laughs> I just wanted to come to streaming. I and then I'm gonna wa- I'm gonna watch it. Well, it made 18 million, and actually, someone uh, that I saw this morning at church saw it the other day, and they said it was great. It reminded them of the Kingsman. They said, "Oh, it's that's like, what that's kind of the vibes I got." Yeah, from they it. said it's zany, kind of like like far out there, super spy stuff. But it, they're like, because it's basically based off this book, right? That's yeah. the whole point of it. Um, it just looks fun. And they said it was yeah. good. It's worth seeing. They said it, and that's what they said. It's a yeah. fun movie. So. Um, so there's that. So I'm going to go to the theater and watch it because I'm that guy. Um, but other Henry Cavill yeah. news is that... Uh, He's dreamy. Mm-hmm. Yes, confirmed. They're working on the Highlander reboot. He's the Highlander in the new reboot. Good. Henry Cavill, if you're listening, we'd love to talk to you. And he said they're doing a serious take on it, and it's uh, going to be pretty intense. So no, oh, I want them to reboot the UPN series. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what it was? Yes. yes. Wasn't it on UPN, the it, Highlander? Uh, I or is that? It wasn't on UPN. What was it on? Uh, what let, am I thinking of? No, it was there was twenty, wasn't it? I it thought was, it was syndication. Wasn't yeah, it? it was like Highlander the series. Was that Christopher Lambert? Did you know that was Canadian? Yeah. A it looked like it was. The series was. But, yeah, following Duncan McLeod. Oh, how's she going? eh? Yeah, a. Eh? You seen that new Highlander? eh? A. Eh? A. Eh? It was syndicated. It was on. syndicated. So it doesn't say what channel it was yeah. on, but it says mm. syndicated. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so that's my Henry Cavill news. All right. Yeah. I have three quick bullet points. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm going to ask you guys if you guys know anything about her, but uh, Supergirl was cast, I guess, while we were gone. Oh. Uh, Millie Alcock? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she per- is that, she's in that Game she's of Thrones spinoff. She's an Australian spin-off. actress. Oh, House of, uh, oh, oh. Wow. Yeah, she's good. Nick really liked her. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. She's a really good actress. Um. Does that mean she, she has big boobs? No. What? Is that what you're saying? No. 
Oh. No, that she's, so she's a say, really good actress. Yeah, she has really big eyes. This that's is her in House of... She's a really good actress. So that that's what she looked like as that role, but that that's her for, for real. Uh, okay. So... Do you guys know anything about her? Like, no, like she, doesn't look fami- she does not look familiar to me. She's a great actress in the ho- House of the Dragon. Okay. And you watched the show or did you just? Oh, absolutely. Oh, really? No, I watched it. It was, she did You're the really first good. person I've met that actually watched and that show. And they did, they did time jumps in it. And she's one of the earlier time jumps. And actually oh, when they original. time jumped past her, I was kind of bummed. Oh, really? Like they, they grew up the character throughout. The, oh. Yeah. And yeah, we're done with her. Yeah. Like the, the first season takes place over like 20 years. Yeah. Uh, then she starts off as a kid, and she's an adult by the end. Nice, but she did. She was incredible in that role. She gets transformed, transformed into an adult by the cue. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like. Uh, and she's gonna be Supergirl, you said. Yeah, kind of like Will Wheaton. Okay. Hmm. Because uh, the only reason I learned about it is because um, um, Helen, what was who played? Mirren. No, the one that played um, Slater. S- Helen Slater posted a p- happily passing the torch, and it was all the Supergirls, mm. and just yeah, and her picture on there. Okay. I thought Sasha Kelly did a pretty decent job. I did too. But I mean they didn't give her much to work with, but she didn't. She was she was a good point in that movie, The Flash. Yeah. All right. Uh did you guys see that Paramount ad? Yes. I still have not Is watched it. Is that a it. You haven't book? watched it? Cuz I wanted to watch it on a big TV and I want to watch it on my uh-huh. phone. Uh, and I never got around to Joe, it. Joe, it was, it was... I've watched it a few times. It's actually really... It's really good. Yeah, I know Creed, Paramount Creed's in it, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, two of the members. Yeah. And uh Picard is in it. Sir Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart is in it. And so if you have a chance, just Google Paramount Plus ad 2024 and, and or Super Bowl ad, I think it's going to be. Is it a Super Bowl ad? I think because it's a Super it Bowl felt ad. like a Super Bowl ad. Oh, it was big. Yeah. So Paramount knocks like, it out of the park with those, man. Yeah. It shouldn't be a Super Bowl ad because we've already seen it. But that's the, they shouldn't but they don't the Super do that. Any, they don't do that anymore, which yeah. is kind of a bummer. You've already seen all the trailers before. Yeah. It's really good. Uh, did, it, you post, did you post it? Yeah, I posted oh, it on yeah. Instagram, I think. In the, in the stories at keeping underscore up car, underscore Cardassians. Mm. I think I posted it on Twitter as well. Did you? Which did is you, at Cardassians. Did you twat that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. All right. But it's, it's, what do you guys think about Super Bowl? As you, as you've gotten older, do the commercials interest you more or less, or do you not care? It seems like they have years that are off years where it just yes. sucks. Yes. And, it, and last year was definitely an off year. And then there's other years where you're like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And so, this will, this will be our last podcast before the Super Bowl. Oh, man. So. No. Yeah. We record next Saturday. Super Bowl's on Sunday. Mm-hmm. But that, we that won't know out. the results. Oh, that we comes out. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, we won't know the results. Oh, fair enough. Do you uh, do you guys have any favorite Super Bowl ads of all time? Yes. Any that but you're going to give me, give me a second to figure it out. Which one it was. I can't like there's been some that have really stood out to me, but like remembering them off the top of my head would be oh, it's going to bug me now because I know there's some. OK, so I don't I don't know if you guys remember this. Or I think Rob does. because We've talked about it. Terry Crews did uh, a series of Terry Tate, Terry Tate office linebacker yeah. commercials. You kill the Joe, you make some <laughs> mo. And they were hilarious. Yes, they were. They were amazing. They, I, I know realize- we, say this, I, we, we say this a lot, but. Like I don't know that they would do something like that today because it was they were violent. Like yeah. he was like, oh yeah, tackling people tackling, through the cubicles. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know about those TPS reports? I love it. Was the uh, Kmart ad "Ship My Pants" a Super Bowl ad? Yeah, I ship my I pants. I believe it was. That was that also was a good one. That was fantastic. I ship my pants right here. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, that's so great. The Betty White commercial for Snickers was a Super Bowl ad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that where they're playing football? And yeah, yeah. And they're like, you're like, tackling like Betty White yeah. out there. Yeah. But yeah, here's the Reebok. It was a Reebok commercial. Terry Tate, office linebacker. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Oh, gosh. I love that. Piece of art. So good. Yeah. That was great. Um, there, was an, uh, there was an NFL commercial. I think it was the 100th year anniversary. Oh, yeah. And yes. it was like a banquet. Yeah. Like a banquet. And there was a. All bunch of NFL legends and a, a football game broke out, and it was it, that was just a lot of fun. It was, it was fun, a, a fun commercial yeah. to Absolutely. see a, a whole bunch of legends get together to record this commercial. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was last year, wasn't it? Was, was it last two, year? Or two think, years? I think ago? It was two years ago with Barry and yeah, there was yeah, oh yeah, a and, whole, uh, bunch of Hall of yeah. Famers. That was that was a fun commercial. Yes, absolutely was. Yeah. Well, okay. There's some good ones. Wasn't that the one where they had? Um, 
There was one where Michael Jordan played ba- basketball against Bugs Bunny, and they were like making the hard shots. That was a movie called Space Jam. Well, yeah, but before that, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Budweiser Got frogs him. were from the Super Bowl. Bud the Budweiser. Uh, Doritos for a, a Doritos for a couple of years had a some, run there of a, maybe two three years. Doritos had some really solid commercials. Yeah, yeah, and then you had yeah Budweiser also had the WhatsApp ad. So. What's up? I, the Budweiser ads that I liked were the, uh, was it the Clydesdales and the Zebras? Yeah. Playing yes. Playing football. <laughs> that was a good ad. Yes, yes, that was good. Oh, goodness. Those they were can good. Be, they can be fun. They can also be uh, just like, what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What did I just watch? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, some of them are really, really ridiculous. This will be this will be one of the first years that I'm more interested in seeing the ads in the game. I know. Well, just because of how close we got, right? Like that's what makes it hard. That's what she said. Um, there is going to be a Deadpool three trailer on the Super Bowl, I guess. Oh, okay, okay, I'm I'll, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch. I'm that. there for that. Oh, the Cindy Crawford ad with Pepsi, back in yes. the day. Yep. Oh, that was the Super Bowl one. Yep. Okay. Absolutely it was. Very nice. Okay. Okay. That was that famous Apple commercial where they smashed the screen right with the sledgehammer. The woman or the woman does the. Turtle. Oh yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be like a 1984 parody. So. Yeah. Uh, you had the Old Spice ad with the the guy, uh, like the the really tough guy for Old Spice. Oh. Mm-hmm. Old Spice had a, a run of decent commercials. Not all of them were Super Bowl ads, but they had a they had a pretty successful that like it was the the like really ripped black guy. Yeah, and he was like a sometimes yeah. Old Spice, 2010. Yeah. I'm on a horse. Yeah. I love that. It's, yes, yes. Why is that so funny? I, I don't know, but it was. That yes. was a really successful ad campaign, I think. It was. And they replaced that guy, and that's the first mistake you made. Yeah. yeah. Once you get rid of him. So, there's that. What else is there? Oh. We've got something very important I got to bring up, and because we have plenty of time. Too. I got a sad thing to bring up. Ooh, we can yeah. bring that up in a second. Let's get through the sarcasm first. So... We were on a boat. Oh, gosh. Okay. The, no, we weren't. The, the last night, and we met our, our children at a hot tub, and on the on the screen there was playing Fast X. <laughs> just that statement, we met children at the hot our, tub. I said our children. I know. Uh-huh. But I just took out the R part. Fast X was playing on the big screen. Uh-huh. And so we watched the ending of Fast X. I, I, I'm speechless. I. It was truly the dumbest thing I've ever it seen. It is the most life. ridiculous thing I have ever seen. It was so dumb. The dumbest thing I've ever seen. It was so like, dumb. I love an action movie. How many fasts have you ha- have you seen? A couple of them. Okay. Like was three that, for me. Yeah, I, I bowed out after that. I, I love an action movie. I love su- su- to suspend des- disbelief. I love dumb things. Mm-hmm. When you combine all of them into one, though. It's family. It's, and it's, the writing is super cheesy. It too, was ter- special effects. You forgot were bad. one thing. You forgot to take away my car. I, oh my god, it was so. Bad. Was that an actual line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Vin I Diesel. like it. Yeah, and then he drives his car over a dam and down the dam while it's exploding. Yeah. Do you got any damn questions while we're here? Uh, the final no. showdown was on the dam. I need. Why. Yeah. why do people like these? Jason Momoa was funny because yeah. he's he's meant to be zany and, and like, dreamy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I don't understand I don't understand the fascination with the the fast series. Yeah, I like don't. if it was still the least bit grounded at all. I'm but okay the first, with it. He was first two or slingshotting so were, helicopters. Were, oh yeah, he did slingshot helicopters. Like, two, yeah, two of them. Two the of them. The first two or three were relatively grounded. The first one was certainly very grounded. Yes, and the second one was still kind of there. Yeah. They were just low level street racers who yeah. stole crap. Yeah. yeah, and then they became heroes of VCRs the universe. and DVD. I know. Yeah, DVD players, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Paul Walker died, and they're just like, "Screw it, we can go to space." Well, I know. I like. I'm watching this going. Did Paul Walker keep that franchise grounded? Maybe he did. Mm-hmm. And then Vin Diesel's like, "You know, what we're gonna do stupid stuff." Yeah. It was. It was. It was rough. Um. It was. And if you like them, I'm not going to apologize, but tell us why. 734-494-0980. I don't. I don't. It, I, I'm going. I'm watching this thing on this. Like, my daughter's standing next to me just cracking about how bad it is. Oh no, but I have to imagine that you've experienced probably the one of the top two or three ways you can watch a Fast and the Furious movie. 
on a cruise ship in a hot tub. I mean, right? Yeah. I also watched the Batman over the Atlantic Ocean last year. Yeah, that was cool. That was a cool one. Wait, you were there too? No, no, I just have seen the Batman. I saw it with both of you in the theater. Don't you remember? Yeah. Were you on that boat too? But we saw it at the theater. Remember, that was the point where we had to the rent question. out the theater, and Rob rented out the theater for us. Yeah, you're sure. dodging the question. I was on a boat where I saw the Batman. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I do not recall. <laughs> it's tradition. I do not recall. Uh, you're misremember. I'm misremembering. I'm, mis- I'm misremembering. No more no, cruises. Don't worry. My alternative fact is I was not on that boat. Um, sad news. The Rip sign needs to be played. Rip. Rip Carl Weathers. Yes. Oh, yeah. Carl Weathers. Adonis Creed. No, pa- Apollo. Apollo Creed. Adonis was his son. Yeah. Apollo Creed. R- Rip, rest in peace. Um, he was also in rest the Predator. In power. Uh he was also in well, let's let's look let's look up a couple of Carl Weathers uh numbers first or films first uh, of all. Stubbs. Yeah. Rocky. Ah, yes, Stubbs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rocky two, Rocky three, Rocky four. Uh, Predator. Predator ha- 2, Predator 3, <laughs> Predator 4. Happy, Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Chubbs Peterson. And yep. he was in Little Nicky as well, actually. Yes. Uh, the Comebacks. Uh, Toy Story 4 he was in as well. Oh, well. Who is he in Toy Story 4? Combat Carl. Okay. Yeah. And Mandalorian. He was yep, in Yep, he was in the well. Mandalorian. Um, What's another big one he, he did? He uh, In the Heat of the Night, he was in as well. Oh wow! And Street Justice wasn't he Dylan in, in, in Predator? He, yes, Dylan. Dylan, and you the, son of a bitch! You son of a bitch! Yes. Hold on, I'm gonna pull that clip up. Please do that. That deserves Dylan. Oh, you son of a bitch! Oh, belly! I'm gonna get it for you. Thank you. In 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 memoriam, memoriam, nailed it. Memoriam, nailed it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it for you. Uh, because he was I only what seventy two. Was he seventy two? Seventy four. Seventy four. I lied. He was older than that. Seventy seventy seven. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean for you to hear that part. But was that your? That's the commercial playing. Oh, that was it. That was your adult site. No, I don't go to those in this situation. In this situation, in the, when he's in that situation. <laughs> Why do you use the army? What do you need us for? Some damn fool accused you of being the best. <gasps> the acting is just so. Dylan! Dad, Dad. California. You son of a bitch. Oh, look at all that muscle. Ah, I, love, I love seeing a meme in the wild. Yeah. Oh, it is. You ever watch something and you catch a meme? Yes. Like, oh. Well, shoot, there was one today uh, on one of our episodes we were watching where he's, uh, Riker's holding his hand. And there's a meme out there that said, just uh, go solo. <laughs> <laughs> but rest in peace, Carl Weathers. You yes. were uh, an, a cultural icon for a long time. You know what? He didn't have to fight Rocky the second time, but he did. He did. He did. And you know what? Mad respect for him. And they became best friends. And that's what's so great about it. And then he died. <sighs> Gosh, Drago. If he dies, he dies. He dies. He dies. He dies. And he died. He gone. Yeah, he gone. I have one question for you guys before we go on. I missed this bandwagon when I was a, when I was a Ute. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, uh, kind of maybe a little bit older than this, but I never yeah, got into Penny, it. Nice my cousin Vinny reference. I yeah, like that. You're welcome. Utes, the Utes. Is this a big deal? Uh, coming to Motor City Motor City Comic Con is Amy Joe Johnson. Okay, you posted that in the group chat, and I was like. Huh. Is that noteworthy of I I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it was noteworthy. I was like, okay, Pink Ranger, that's cool. She's an OG Ranger. <laughs> I had a uh, thing for like her it. back in the day. Well, I see I see a bunch of memes out there like with her, like if you didn't have crushes on her to ping up, blah 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 blah. Oh yeah. I I think anybody who watched uh Power Rangers who had crushes on girls had crush on the Pink Ranger. Oh yeah. For sure. Oh yeah, for sure. I just wasn't sure because I, like I said, I maybe I missed that bandwagon for. But I just don't know what I don't know star she, power she has now. Like well, I, she I wasn't, doesn't. I know, she but does. I, I wasn't sure if it. I was like, okay, that's cool, but I wasn't sure how noteworthy it was. It's not. 
It's not. I don't. She doesn't have any star power at this point. You look. You I had an excited she, look on your face, though. She did have a big show in Canada called Flashpoint that she was on. That was a huge hit there. Oh, I do remember that being a yeah, people. Swear I've never heard of it. it. It was on the CBC. Yes, correct. And it's, I remember that. What was the went, show? I've never heard of it. Flash. Flashpoint. It was a sci-fi it, show. No, it was a SWAT show. Oh, was it? Was it? Mm-hmm. 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 Strategic response unit known as the Canadian SWAT, SWAT team. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, she was in it. All right, nice. Yeah. So. So are we getting our tickets for Amy Jo Johnson. We're gonna get her on the show. We, oh, you're trying to get, get her on the show. I'll get her on the show. Yeah, but you know it's gonna be a Grand Rabbits Comic Con. Grand Rabbits. Grand Rabbits. <laughs> Grand Rabbits. Oh well, yeah, this this and this one we're probably gonna go to because we can visit my family while we're there. Oh, nice. Mm, na 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 na. She's gonna be in Grand Rabbits. Yeah, yeah, she is for their their show. Pick her up. Let's go. <laughs> Pick her up. Let's go. Let's go see na na. She's gonna be like, you guys are creeps. Yeah, stop following me around. Sorry, sorry, na na. I was just gonna say, well, stop coming <laughs> to within driving distance. I know of that's us. that's your fault. Yeah, yeah. You, you did. A You're, honestly, she's she's creepy. She because she. She's stalking us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she can go to any Comic Con. And she chooses to go to Detroit and Grand Rapids and Columbus, Cleve, all yeah. within driving distance. Participates in our nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I think we're on to something. We're yeah. on. Yeah. So, anyways. Is she that. the best? Is she our show's best friend? Yeah. I would think so uh, out of the group. Yeah. Okay. She's the best friend. Will doesn't even talk to us anymore. Oh, John so. pretends like he doesn't know us. <sighs> John. Frakes knows us. John Johnny knows us. Joe Nathan. Yeah. He knows us well. Ron Moore is purposely ignoring us. Yeah. yeah. Ronnie. Yeah. Ugh. We continue to do Ron Moore properties and he's like, eh. Screw them. I know. Ron, we're supporting you. Next we're gonna do uh we're gonna do uh what's the one with the women in the Outlander. We're gonna with do Outlander women. next. The one with the women. What's the one? the one he did with the broads? With the broads. <laughs> we should do a for all mankind <laughs> before that. Yeah. That's such a good show. Such a good show. He said his goal is ultimately to kind of tar- tie it into Star Trek. I guess they did this season. So they, uh, they, there's some hints. But they said there's like only three shows exist, which are TOS, Next Generation, and D- DS9. Yeah. yeah. Really? Made top three? Well, he, he factored into DS9 heavily, so. Yeah. yeah. He's playing for the home team there. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, no, our next show is uh, Firefly, right? Is it? I mean, it's only nine episodes. I mean, I don't get to go on your guys' vacation, so why why would I get to pick a show that we watch? I thought you, That's fine. I thought, what do you want to pick? I mean, we got a year and a half. I've got, I've got six and a half seasons to to really narrow <laughs> yeah, this do. down, so I'm not. it's not high on my priority list. Speaking of six and a half seasons, let's go into Star Trek, the next Look generation. Look at that. Smooth. That was smooth. Smooth. <laughs> We are into The Battle, which is the ninth episode of season one of Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, Ferengi Damon Bach approaches the, the Captain Picard and says, hey, look, I brought you a gift. Uh, it's your old ship, the Stargazer. While this is happening, Picard is starting to have headaches and weird dreams about his time on the Stargazer. Uh, while he was on the Stargazer, he got into a fight with the Ferengi uh, and the Ferengi ship. He blew it up dead, but they had to abandon the Stargazer. Um, and this Damon Bach is angry because uh, his son was on that ship. He wants revenge against Picard. So he plants a, a, a mind altering uh, device in there that makes Picard think he's living that battle where he has to transport himself back to the Stargazer and get in a fight with the Enterprise and basically make the Enterprise blow him up. But they're able to stop it in time. Damon Bach is relieved of command. Uh, Picard is deemed well. And uh, the Ferengi are upset because Damon Bach engaged in an unprofitable venture. The end. Revenge is not profitable. Revenge is not profitable, sir. So we get to see the Stargazer, which was his last ship, right? We're led to mm-hmm. believe this is a ship before the, the Enterprise. That's how I understood it. So they said this was nine years ago, though. So what was he doing between this and the, the Enterprise? Uh, vacation. Or was he maybe like serving at Starfleet Command? Maybe, because my, my that's a good that's a good question. I didn't hear I never, the nine year thing. I never realized that. I always thought he went right from the Stargazer to the. Wait, did, that's good. I didn't hear nine years. Did, did they mention it was nine years I ago? I thought or? they did. I thought he said nine years. I could be imagining things. 
uh, Stargazer to Enterprise. That would be a that would be a long uh, hiatus from command of a ship. Oh. That would be huge. It, there is a gap, a mysterious gap between it. Uh, a good portion of what was he doing between the loss of the Stargazer and gaining command of the Enterprise. So there's an episode of uh, like a, a comic that was written to explain that gap. So it was oh. that time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nine years. A decade of Captain Picard's life is unaccounted wow. for. That is a long time between command. Yeah. There's a book that says he served at Starfleet Academy and pursued his PhD in archaeology. Arche- wow. So the captain was killed and Picard assumed command. So he hadn't, he was the helms person for the Stargazer. They would see, when, in the writing of this episode, it's a little murky because it seemed like he was commanding, commanding, yeah. but also not. Maybe his helmsman died and he was at the helm trying to help take over the position. So how long was he the captain of Star, the Stargazer? Not very long. So he was basically given the largest command. Like he was given the Enterprise D. It's nuts. Yeah, exactly. Right. So now, of course, if he was serving at Starfleet Command, he obviously had a good reputation and they developed the Picard maneuver, which was kind of cool, like that they warp in and you see two ships at the same time. That was a cool mm-hmm. idea. Um, so I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting. I really thought they had made it out to be he was captain of the Stargazer for a while, but I'm 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 confused. It's, a quick search says he was captain of the Stargazer for 22 years. What? No. no. That's just a quick search. Okay. Hold on a second. I have to. So if you do some quick math, 22 years plus the nine he, he was, was gone, that's 31 years. How old is he supposed to be in this show? Like 46, right? Yeah. So by the time. Uh, yeah, this doesn't make sense. So by that math, he would have gained command of the Stargazer when he was like 14 or 15 yeah, years old. It literally says he served 22 years. I don't believe that. I can't believe that. And then he was only the served Enterprise 22? captain for eight years. Okay, so he served 22 years? 20... Was he the, like an acting ensign? Like, uh... Oh, that's a good point. So served as captain of the USS Stargazer for 22. There's no way he served. served. as captain is something different. That's captain. That math doesn't, that that, doesn't math. That doesn't math out. There's no. some fuzzy math here. Yeah. He served as a bridge officer on the Stargazer until he took over command in 2333 after the first officer and the captain were killed. There's not a lot of things adding up. 2333. Then he took over command of the Enterprise at 2363. That does 30 years later? He's No way. This does not track. How Okay, how old is he in this show? I I, I they, feel they never, like in his 40s. Age doesn't matter. And Yeah, this is a different era, right? So he could be 60 and it doesn't really, you know. Uh, I don't like that he was captain of the Stargazer for 22 years, but only the Enterprise for eight, because then it's like, well, how important is the Enterprise to him? I'm trying to find it on Memory Alpha. I don't like this. I'm not happy with this. Not happy with this at all. Man, I was going into this really liking this episode. Now now I'm so confused. That takes it down a little bit of a notch. Yeah, I'm like, okay. Okay. All right, let's not get wrapped up in that. Let's let's say that's not important right now. Let's let's do that. It does confuse me, though, because they do make a big deal about Stargazer. Yeah. And it is a focal point of the episode, so right. I think getting un- understanding his tie-in, his 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 love for that ship, the tie-in is important. We'll get somebody to comment. I'm sure. I'm yeah. Sure. So our fellow Trekkies out there, if you have an answer for this, please let us know. Yes, please enlighten us on the <laughs> Picard's reign over the Stargazer. But most resources do say 22 years. Yeah, you know? which uh, is, Memory Alpha says 22 years. Hmm. Which is kind of like, it seems like he couldn't have been that good of a captain. The Stargazer wasn't an amazing ship. Maybe he refused promotions to other ships until it was destroyed, and then he served at Starfleet. For nine years yeah. before he got the Enterprise. And maybe they bugged him the entire time to take on another ship. Maybe. All speculation. All but there's no way you get the galaxy, there's no way you get the, the, the <clears throat> flagship of the Federation without... Having some clout, yeah. But how old was Bones in the in the premiere? A hundred and like fifty or something like that. Okay, so, all right. By that math, I can see it might it might work out. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. All right, let's go back into this episode though. Okay. Yes. So we have another Frangi episode. Yep. Uh, I feel like the Frangi are in this episode are one hundred thirty-seven. One hundred thirty-seven are portrayed differently. 
Like, it feels like they've had a problem figuring out what the Ferengi are, because they feel very different in this episode versus the the one episode. Oh, so it could be just different Ferengi. Yeah, it could be. But they, these ones seem smarter, more intelligent. Yep. Um, I mean, more on top of their game. Definitely more on top of their game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Clothe your females. I did like the Ferengi in this one. I did, too. They were much, they were, they were better. So, it... Without jumping forward to the next episode, which is a Q centric episode, mm-hmm. we've we've really set up two potential long term foes for this series, right? Yeah, the Ferengi and Q, yeah, because they've both now had two episodes, and of the two, who do you think which one seems more of a like a a menace a menace Q. Or, or, by a lot, though, yeah, yeah. Because I like the Ferengi in this. I, I, okay. I think not as not as like a every other episode or like a, but like four or five times yeah. a season. I can yeah. get that. Yeah, I can get that. I it's can, a recurring enemy. Yeah, I, I, I really like just knowing what they were in DS Nine, which I really love. I, I think the DS Nine portrayal of the Ferengi is the. T- I think that's. Perfection. The bee's knees. Yes. I think they're I think they're like sort of ramping up towards that. Right. Right. Yeah. I I, I like the I like them as a villain and not as like a wild card. Because that's what they seem like in DS9. More of a wild card than a, than a true villain or a true uh adversary to anybody. They're and more to, of a and wild card. And like, to be fair in that and DS9, I mean, there's different Ferengi, right? There, there's military. Yeah. They, these guys are obviously heavily into the financial end of things, and obviously all Fer- Ferengi are. Yeah. But we're not seeing the more militaristic No, we never Ferengi. really did. Yeah. And I, I like it. I'm, yeah. I like this. I like this side of the Ferengi. Um, the, it, but they in seem DS9, like a real... Uh, a real uh, potential nemesis. For, yeah, for the they Federation. seem. Le- they they definitely Here. seem more legitimate. Here they do. They- yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. In DS Nine, it was more like, okay, all right, you need something done. I know a guy. Yeah. And it's nine times out of ten a Ferengi. Well, yeah, and then the first one, other than the time on the ship, where they're more he's like on the mercenaries. Screen. They don't really have a side. They just. Well, where's the profit, bro? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come but- on. But I enjoyed this episode. We see a different side of Picard, right? He, they, there's like a, a like a more down to earth version of it, especially because he's battling uh, headaches. Here's my thing that I struggled with this first season: is they are way too preachy about some things, like how they've advanced beyond headaches and stuff. Like, I know they. Well, how are you going to get rid of a headache again, if it hasn't happened yet? Yeah. Well, because they find and that there's it, different reasons to have headaches. I just hit my head. Headache. I know. I have children. Headache. It's just I work with two bozos on a podcast. Headache. Hey, amen, oh, brother. I have a headache so amen. bad right now. But again, it's like the show don't tell. Like you don't have to. You know, I I guess here like she could have just been like headaches. We don't really notice those anymore. But then she went on the, like this rant about how they passed all that stuff. Sometimes I don't need that. You don't need. To well, tell I agree. That. Um, headaches are so two centuries ago. So, like, I mean, oh my god, Picard! No one gets headaches <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but like, she's like a headache. Like she was blown away, and he's like, "Yeah, my head hurts." Oh, I know what headaches are. But then he tells the other members of the crew, and they're like, "Oh, okay, you should rest." Like they all know what it is. But yeah. you tell the ca- the doctor, and she's doctor like, "Oh crushes. my gosh!" I've well, never- it's because everybody else on the crew, you know, drops a aspirin three thousand, and they're fine. They're fine. Yeah. Picard's just like, "I'm, I'm gonna deal with it. I'm yeah, deal with it. Oh, I got a headache." Yeah, I gotta, go see, I, gotta, I gotta see Dr. Crusher. I know. I do appreciate the relationship through this episode and their banter back and forth. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, there was a You know co- what they say uh, helps relieve the tension of a headache? <laughs> That's why I said he was going to see Dr. Crusher. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. Know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I wish there was that line in there that she's like, What is wrong with me? And she's like, Captain, I, I don't know, but something unusual has definitely been happening to you. And he's like, Why do doctors always say the obvious as though it's a revelation? <laughs> She's like, why do captains always act like they're immortal? Like their their banter back and forth yeah. is pretty good. You can see the formation of their relationship. And here. how did no one pick up on the fact that it would just seem to happen when the Ferengi were coming around? Oh my gosh, it's like so obvious. Come right? on, come on! Like it's so freaking obvious. Except for Wesley. Oh, and let's just transport this chest into his room, even though there's a mysterious glowing orb in there, and not pay attention. But by, by the end of T- Tasha's reign, we got to ask the question: Who was the worst security chief? Oh my gosh, Tasha. Tasha's really or Worf. dropping the ball. Tasha's really dropping the ball. Worf. for real, yeah. for real, for real, Tasha. Hey. It wasn't his job at that point to vet it. That was securities. 
yeah. is clearly in command due to the red. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, anyways, I enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun with this one. Um, I like the Stargazer flashbacks. I like how we're know- learning more about the like why Picard is such a big deal with the Picard maneuver, right? Mm-hmm. And how like he created something that no one else had done before. Which in all that years of the Federation, no one dropped that bomb before. Right, exactly. But it's cool. I mean, it was cool. Yeah. I don't, actually, one of the things I enjoyed about this episode is I did not remember it in the least. I was watching this going, I do not remember this. I didn't this. really remember this episode either. Like, not at all. I'm like, wow. Yeah. It's kind of, it was kind of nice going in with kind of new almost eyes. Like a, almost like a new episode, yeah. like a lost episode. Well, yeah. I, I kind of like how they put in the ghosts of the people at, at the stations, like, working. Because those yeah. are probably people who were killed, right? Uh, and it's kind of like a cool thing that he's remembering these ghosts of his past and... I don't know. I I dug how they the fire flashback. That was yeah, fun. That was... yeah. I dug how they pulled this episode off. Like until Wesley's to... the only one that saved the day or figured hey. it out. Oh my gosh, Wesley's line. Wesley, yeah. I All want that these... sweater though. I want. I want the. I like his. Uh... Oh, you can order it online. You're welcome, ladies, adults. <laughs> and then he walks off. Freaking idiot, kid. Idiot. Again, this Stupid is not kid. Will Wheaton's fault that they wrote him no. incorrectly. But man, they wrote him incorrectly. Well, it was a disservice to everybody else on the ship. Yeah, like the everyone, child, these guys have been serving the Starfleet for X amount of years, and he's the only one that can figure it out. Come on. You know how frustrating it is when you have to ask a child to, to help you? You're like, can you, can you help me do this? And they just like, they look at you so disgusted, and they just do it in two seconds. And like that was easy. Not the android that can copulate millions of things at a right. time, or the guys that have credited service of over thirty years, no. or the guy teenager. that, or, or the guy that can see things on our, like, that we can't see because of his visor. No, no, it's the kid who has it. Is wearing a sweater as ant knit for him. You can wear that online though. You should wear that next week. Look that up right now. Here's some interesting sets, the props, West. and costume stuff. The Bridge of the Stargazer is a redress of the Enterprise D's Battle Bridge, which is kind of cool. Okay. Which in turn was a redress of the movie Enterprise Bridge. I did not know that. I didn't realize that that the Battle Bridge was a redress. Yeah, for this occasion. The redress of a redress. Yeah. uh, For this occasion, the TNG era chairs and con op stations were replaced with Kirk's command chair and the combined navigation helm station last seen in Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. I will say the chair looked familiar. Yeah, the turbo lift interior from the first three Star Trek films also appears, although, curiously, several crew members, crew members are seen leaving through the side of the turbo lift rather than using the car in its established capacity. So, I don't know. I th- That's fascinating. It always blows my mind how great set uh, stage producers are. Absolutely. Like, how they redress sets. And you wouldn't, like, unless someone tells you, you wouldn't be like, oh, that's that's 10 forward. They use it for other things, right? You yeah. wouldn't know. They do that a lot with the engineering deck as oh, yeah. well. They reuse that set a lot, which they haven't used the one they traditionally use yet in this season. Correct. Right. But they'll get there. Um, Found so. it. Did you? Yep. Good nice. job. Proud of you. Thanks, Google. Mm, you're welcome. Um, anything else stand out from you for you in this episode? Not really. It's a pretty straightforward episode, I thought. Mm. Some of their continuity things are great. The Stargazer had the warp effect from the TOS era movies yeah. instead of the warp effect used from the TNG onward. Oh, my gosh. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like little details like that. Me too. Mm-hmm. What did you think about the design of the Stargazer? It was unique. Then a story. <laughs> yeah. I did like the bridge of it, actually. Yeah. Like the more claustrophobic feel to it. Absolutely. Like the older style yep. bridge. Yes. Not the you, massive that's ones the one they have. You in... said was a, a redress of a redress, right? Yeah. 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 Not yeah. the massive one you have like in Strange New World or Discovery. Or in the Next Generation. Next Generation bridge. It's huge. It's huge, but it's not as big as like Strange New World's bridge. Yeah, that's that thing is massive. That makes sense to me, though, that you would have to like again. Not many systems are automated. You need more people to control them as time goes on. You need less people. Massive. Is this just a thing where people are? Every show has to be bigger and bigger. Well, it's a production value. You get a bigger, bigger budget, so you build right. bigger. Well, and you different camera angles you can shoot because it's a bigger. Oh yeah, set, you know. And I get it. Like, you know, could I nitpick the fact that they're shuttlecrafts and like? Um, Stranger Worlds are six times the size of a shuttlecraft on the next gener- or next generation, or six times the size of a runabout yeah. on DS Nine. We could, but just let it happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the one thing that I, that I just have to stop criticizing with Star Wars 
is as as the move as real time yeah goes on the ships become more elaborate and intricate and but it's in the timeline of things it's not that far we haven't deviated too far from uh the movie that was created in the year 1977 right like but, you put that pin as as like the you drop that pin you you don't deviate too far from that point in time but the technology just looks so much more advanced and you can't help it because it's advancement in r- actual technology and reality and CGI yeah. and things like that. But it's like, uh, kind of, it does make everything seem dated and take away from a little bit of the continuity. It does. You mentioned the Star Wars thing. Can you imagine with this whole Paramount fire sale that's going to happen here soon? If Disney were to come in and buy just Star Trek, oh, dude. if they made a crossover movie, how many fans they would piss off because the both. Because Picard went at this it's thing. It's worth the. It's or, that's worth the price or of Star Wars. The Death Star destroys Star an Enterprise, or the Enterprise destroys a Death Star. Imagine how pissed off the, the fan is, bases will the be. The problem is Star Wars is science fantasy, and Star Trek is science fiction. So Star Wars, but every, it's in a galaxy far, far away. But all their ships are massive, massive, massive. They would dwarf even the biggest ship the Federation has. So they would slaughter the Federation, but because they're science fantasy, they're not. I based just want to see. I want to see a race between the Enterprise and the Millennium Falcon. Oh, That's all I want to I see. I wonder if they can complete it in twelve parsecs. I, I want to see a Fast and the Furious style. Oh my movie gosh! Between the two yes. of them, I'm going to throw ships. a shuttlecraft at the at the. <laughs> st- yes, let's do it, man. That would be incredible. I'd watch that. Ooh, could you imagine the founders taking on uh, founders taking on the Empire, or or the prophets versus a Jedi? Mm. Wow. Mm. Anyways, it'd be we're terrible. making a movie. It'd be terrible. All right. Yeah. Some other it things that I want to point out about this episode. The thought maker device that was banned by the Frangi totally makes sense that the Frangi would create a device to make a profitable sale. Right? Oh, for like sure. To convince yeah, people. yeah, of course. Yeah. Totally a Frangi thing. Totally makes sense. But it's weird that they ban it. Probably is used on other Frangi. Uh, yeah, see, there it is. And, and yeah, because I don't believe in fair trade necessarily, but they don't want you to like going after the Grand Nagus. Right. Yeah, that would be a problem. I mean, and I'm problem. sure the Grand Nagus could be like, no, no, no. That's no. exactly how he'd say, how yeah. he'd say it. That's too. exactly how he'd say it. That's exactly how he'd and say it. it. Probably still um, the Grand Nagus from DS9 at this time frame. Probably. probably. Inconceivable. Inconceivable. Uh, anything else you want to talk about in this episode, or are we ready to move on to hide and cue? Let's hide and cue. All right, hide and cue is pretty easy. The Enterprise is en route uh, to help some colonists caught in an explosion. Q reappears, takes most of them hostage on a different planet um, where he puts them against basically Napoleon versus them. But Q is interested in Riker. Uh, he, he gives Riker the power of the Q and says, hey, we want you to come with us because we're interested in humanity. And Riker's like, no, you're not. But then Riker starts getting a little cocky, starts using those powers, starts liking it a little too much. Um, towards the end of the episode, uh, Q's like, Riker, come with me. And Riker's like, yeah, this would be kind of cool. Let me use these powers for humanity. And he starts giving all these great things to the crew. And the crew's like, nah, I don't want it. I want to earn it. I don't want it to be fake. I want it to be real. And then Q's like pissed. He leaves because he's like, bro, this ain't cool. This isn't how I wanted it to end. End of episode. See, my I, my summations have been much That shorter. is really the the... The most amazing part of this series so far yeah. is how I'm, I want to congratulate how far you've come along on your on your uh, Look, bro, summaries. How are you going to do a summation of some of those episodes of DS Nine in thirty seconds or 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 Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica, Galactica yeah. right? Like you cannot, like how can you? Do we that? we didn't say we didn't tell you gun to your head. Do it in thirty seconds or else. Yes. I know, I know. It just became that. right? But then listeners take a nap halfway through the. Uh, description rob by this point if they haven't already fallen asleep or turned us off that's true. either you know more power to them yeah but we have the return of q and i think he's much better here than he was in the first episode yes it's more q yeah it's becoming more like what he made yeah. the character right it was like again was, they're figuring out who they are yeah. in every episode but i feel like this is the q we know and i think in love actually i mean i think I think they've done that with both of these adversaries in, in these episodes. They they took the next, they developed the Ferengi even further, and they're uh, they're a little better than the first time. 
Q is better than the first time. I I do like Q as more of. I I think I said that after, after encounter at Farpoint, right? Yeah. That I I would like. He seems like the adversary of the series, and in a way, he is. In a way, I I, I think I kind of knew that. I didn't really know who or what he was, but I've seen. You know, I've seen pictures or or clips or whatever, and uh, I think Q was he was in a, an episode of DS Nine, was he? Was he? yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He got punched by uh, Cisco. Picard never punched me. I'm not Picard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right, Cisco. That's Get right. you some. See, uh, a controversial opinion, at least in in this house, and it sounds like with this audience uh, here in the room, Q annoys the piss out of me. Yeah, not so far right now. But the more we go with him, he really annoys the he piss out of me. He gets a little more zany, right? Yeah. He gets a and little... then, yeah, he just, it's just too not, much for me. I'm not telling you I like him. I I'm just saying he's better. He seems like a very formidable adversary for Picard over the long haul of the series. Right. Right. I could That's see, fair. I could see him developing into a, like a, an, an arch nemesis, arch nemesis, yeah. if you will. I agree. Yeah. 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 Um, so where do we start? Um, does he seem, okay, I have a critique. I want to start with a critique. Go for it. Does Q seem just repetitive to you? Yes. Is it, uh, show up, tell you you're not as good. We argue with you that we are. We are you. And then there's some sort of resolution and then go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, I was like, okay, this is. Without the trial, but this is more of a... This is kind of like a repeat of the first yeah. one, minus giving Riker the power. Yeah, yeah, now he's trying to tempt Riker. Right. Yeah. You're right. As opposed to just to say you're all bums. I am, now we're curious about you. Yes. But we're not really. But, but we are. But so what not. do you think? Do you think they are actually curious about them, or do you think they're scared of them, that humans will advance past them? I think they're curious because they're scared. Yes. So, so here's my question, though. Q exists outside of time. Couldn't they click their fingers and go forward and see how far humanity advances without actually... Well, I think that's why they're scared of them, because they see where they advance to. They talked about it in the episode. Oh, okay. So he knows that they yeah. become way, way better than them. Yeah, when him and Riker were talking, they, he covered it just saying that you'll become maybe even better than the Q. Uh, and the Q mm-hmm. don't want that. Q no, no likey. Q no likey at all. Okay. All right. So, so he travels in the future. They know they become better. So is his goal to corrupt Riker, which would lead to corrupting humanity? I think so. Okay. So this is like a Terminator 2 thing. Yeah. Like go back and or Terminator thing. Go back in time, mess with them so they can't become what they are. Mm. I so, think so. so a version Q, of that at least. If you're Q, then why don't you just keep on doing it to new people? And why do you choose Riker of all people? Yeah. Like Picard staff. But he does corrupt Riker. Yeah, he, he does. does. He's had, it's, he has, it's everybody else that, that yeah. doesn't. And it shows Riker like, wait, you're being a douche. It's like the reverse Scrooge. You know, it's it, or like a, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's interesting because at first they do a good job. I so, I they don't do a good job transitioning Riker from I'm never going to use these powers to all of a sudden I'm a douchebag. He transitions pretty quickly after he sees that dead kid. I understand a large part of that is because of the time they have in the show. Yeah. They can't. They can't. They have an hour. But man, it went from like all of a sudden like Jean Luc, gather your crew, and he's talking to him, and he just walks away from it, like. And when he called him John Luke, I was like, oh, hell no. Yeah. Oh, hell and like, no. And, and then, literally five minutes ago in the episode, he had him promise to not. And he was like, I'm not going to use these powers, blah, 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 blah. Like, well, they they showed him on the planet or they showed him earlier where he was standing up very self-righteous. Yeah. And then he wasn't. So maybe they planned this. But they only had an hour to work with. You have to suspend this because I thought the same thing. Yeah. I'm like, well, this escalated quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I just there were some weird things in here like that could have been cut out. Like Tasha Yar coming on to the captain. Does she come on to everyone? Dude, she was like, if, if you, you weren't, weren't the captain, captain. Wow. Yeah. It's like seriously. Wow. She didn't come on the Riker. I know. Or Worf. Yet. I mean, I don't know. But like in But the Jordy came on to her? They're only in Damn you good looking girl. In ten episodes, they have already showed like they've I don't think they're doing a good job with Tasha you, Yar. You can tell that this is written by the original series writers. Yes. Because it, there's original series. High focus on sexuality. There's original series. Horniness. Feel to it at times. Yeah. But I like this. Ep- Again, I like this episode. These yeah. are two episodes in a row that I finally like now. Because um, there is some good meat to that. Like, 
the pow- does power corrupt absolutely all There's the time. There's good meet the Riker? Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. But like, here's Riker, who's a fairly good guy, and they showed that they could corrupt him by the end, right? The power corrupted him. But the goodness of everyone else around him will bring him back. I do like a... Why do you say media- so condescendingly? I know. Uh, because did Q ever take the powers away from him? Yeah. They didn't when, when, show when that. When Q got taken away, it sound, it seems like they took the powers away from everyone. Yeah. Uh, when, just, they re- when they re... Zingded everybody into back the spots. into their normal spot. Yeah. yeah, it was like nothing. It was ever implied. Happened. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I it, I like how the forge is like. No, I'm good. Blind. I yeah. back my blindness. I, no, he the forge is focused on who it was from the queue. Yeah, he was. It's, yeah. I like it. I just don't like who I'd have to thank. For yeah, it. which is pretty I love, cool. I like that. Yeah, me too. Um, and Data's very logical. Do you think Will Wheaton liked the guy that played? Uh, him ten year ten year older Will Wheaton. I know, right? Like, like, like uh, that didn't. They don't look. Well, Jordan was like, not bad, Wesley. They well, know. well, and they kept his voice. Will Wheaton. That was voice. creepy. That was kind of weird. That was yeah, very weird. That was a weird. So, choice. so adult Will Wheaton, or sorry, adult Wesley doesn't get a puberty voice. <laughs> no, 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 no. You grow up. Hey, ten- man. You get, get, get that. Michael, you, got the, you got that Michael Jackson. That Michael Jackson. You know that wasn't Michael Jackson's real no, voice. No, it wasn't. He, he had, had a, a deep, deep voice. voice. Yeah. Super deep voice. He's a he's a black guy from Gary, Indiana. Of course, <laughs> of course, he had a deep. You know, voice. I don't think I've, I think I've heard that, but I I don't think I've ever. Yeah, heard Yeah, you can it. hear his yeah. voice a couple of times. Like he's he uses it a few times. He mm. used it in a video game that he was in, actually. Oh, really? His real voice. Yeah. Um, I'll have to search that up. Yeah, it's it's a trip. Why the hell did he stick around that terrible, fake voice? Uh, I think his goal was to feel like a kid to people, so like they felt more yeah. attached to his music. I don't know. Interesting. Keep that. Also, uh, lots of sexual and physical abuse by his father, and uh, that's going to make you say some, do some weird things. Fair enough. Uh, maybe not sexual from his father, but I, I'm assuming uh, he was uh, probably was abuse. sexually abused at some point. Yeah, because you don't turn out the way he does. Allegedly. Anyways, <laughs> episode. Ooh, Q, episode so warning. Q. Q, Q, Q. Okay, so uh, Tasha Yar gets put in this penalty box and immediately resorts to crying and freaking out. That was a weird scene. That was a hockey mm-hmm. reference, Rob. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. she gets put in the penalty box. Um, a weird scene. But it, it was a weird scene, but Picard turning the comfort mode. Was, was not re- the side we've seen of him. Yeah, which is showing different sides that he can be, do as a captain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, like, why doesn't he show this side? Because then the crew immediately comes on to him. <laughs> I know. I got to stay the captain or else they're going to try to jump my bones. If like, you weren't a captain. This is why I have to be so strict. I know, man. <laughs> you people, just keep your pants on around yeah. me, please. I would appreciate it. Is that, but, the, is the, second, cause, is that the second person? Crusher? Crusher has thrown herself are? at him. But that was fine. They were drunk. Man. Um, she now could we, throw herself at me. Yeah. Uh, so Q, uh, so they're fighting the uh, the whatever French, those were, yeah. But nasty faced French, which was terrible makeup, by the way. But it was 1987. Yeah, it's cool, and they had laser muskets, so there was that. That was a surprise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how, how about uh, Worf getting stabbed? I know, and Wesley stab, getting stabbed, and Wesley getting stabbed, stabbed. Kill him, kill him, dead. Worf had more to do this episode, which was nice. And then, mm-hmm. and then Riker, no. <laughs> And then they're all back on He's the bridge. So mad, so mad. And then that poor dead child. So here is a really good question, though. This okay, I, this episode I liked because there is a deep good question here, right? Riker has the power to bring people back from the dead. This girl he could have saved, that was dead. Yeah. Right? If we had been here a minute sooner, we could have saved her. Blah blah blah. You know. Do you think power like that in anyone's hand is going to end up? Corrupting every yes. every single person. Yes, there's yes. not a single person. Yes, that that would not corrupt. They yes. would not not a single person. Even in enlightened, advanced federation, I don't, I don't think it would corrupt Picard or someone like that. But everybody else, yeah, yeah, I think it would. would uh, yeah. It's I don't know. Well, Picard is supposed to is like the ideal Starfleet captain, right? Yeah, he he, really he is make... the he is the evolved. Yeah, I don't think it corrupts Picard. But there's he still the a, evolved, right? there yeah. is still a, a, a thread of uh, there's still a thread that connects us to just the most basic animalistic part of our of the human experience, right? Yeah. Even now, we, we've we've advanced so far, but there's still, I mean, the, you, there's fight or flight. There's you need to eat, you need to procreate. There's all of these things that that are deeper than our evolution. I think 
it once you get power like that, it taps into something deeper than how far you've evolved. Let's let's go minor scale. Let's let's scale it down quite a bit to nothing so major. Mm-hmm. It's last Sunday. You're watching a game on the TV. Oh, I'd I'd chop off Brock Purdy's legs in eight seconds. And but, I'm, I'm but then it wouldn't feel real. Um, ever, to everybody else, it would though. Yeah. Yeah, but to me, it wouldn't. If but I'm the god, you're and- allow, you're allowing them to play the next game though, and. If you don't alter that game, maybe they win, and then it, who cares? Yeah, but then if they lose the Super Bowl, what's to stop me from clicking my fingers again and then making them win the Super Bowl? Well, yeah, so that's a problem, right? Right, that's the, that's power, the problem. The power, yeah. Yeah, so you're the, 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 at the very root, though, you change one play where Vildor catches an uh, interception off his face mask. Mm-hmm. Just one little change. Oops. You're like, oh, man, look at that. That's pretty cool. The Lions maybe pulled it out, and you're in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And someone blows past Cam Sutton, and you're like, "I'm gonna make Cam Sutton just a little bit faster on this play." Yeah. Oh, I can change the trajectory of that ball a little bit. I'll just scoot over Aiden Hutchinson a little bit so he blocks that that pass. I know, but then then none of it's real. It's very real. They're still so gonna make the play, where, Nick. So this is where I understand some of these characters on the, the bridge being like, "Yeah, it's not real. It wouldn't like, be real to me." Yeah, exactly. Because I know what I was, and yeah. you by you clicking your, I didn't grow into this. Yeah, you made me this, right? There's something to that. I agree with that. But like, so is that what Wesley said? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I want to take the time to grow into yeah. this. So Riker, though, up to this point, even after this, he did nothing really bad. He became pretty arrogant very quickly. Yeah, oh, yeah very quickly. Which means he would have became a dirt bag. Yeah. Um, Especially knowing how he feels about the ladies. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I just like I like the idea of this absolute power corrupting. Absolutely. is a, is an interesting. Thing I think it takes take a special on. individual for that not to happen. And I don't think know if that special individual exists. I don't think even Picard I agree would with Rob. that guy. I don't no. think anyone exists like that on this earth either. Well, I think the whole purpose of Picard is to show what the ideal humanity is. And I think the only thing that scars Picard is the Borg. Right later on. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler alert. He'll figure it out. Yeah. At any rate, Joe, I have a question for you. Yep. The Wharf fantasy. <laughs> uh-huh. What were your thoughts on that? Loved it. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Didn't they say this is Cleon sex or something yeah, like that? But she I'm was not, hot, too. And then That's this... foreplay uh, like crazy. She and was this... hot, too. Yeah, she was working it. And this is where they hadn't figured out. Worf yet because he's like that's not my people anymore. I don't yeah. want to be a part of that. I left them behind. Yeah, they left yeah, you like, behind, bro. Yeah, it, 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 well, but which is he, what someone who gets very left much, behind. He very much uh, he tap, was, taps back into Klingon sex. In oh DS9. yeah, nine. Yeah, with, oh yeah, he does with Jadzia. Yeah. But I think this is a case of them not knowing what they're doing with Worf yet. Right? Yeah, yeah, they clearly didn't know because then anyway, upcoming this season or next season, they they change this a little bit. Even. Oh yeah, they change it coming forward here. I immediately thought, is Worf gay? That's what they're leading to. Uh, this is not sex for me. Give me a I mean, warrior. I mean, if if if, if, Riker, if Riker had the powers and Roka. he just, I know, but like, you just put a a hot Klingon female crawling up to him, wanting to uh, engage. You know what I mean? I know what you and mean. He's like, yeah, it's not my type. It's um, I'm good. It's like, all right, mm-hmm. guess not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's saving himself for the right person. Okay. The right person was on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> hey uh, Anything else from this episode that you really want to talk about? Anything else interesting? There was no uh, Deanna Troy this episode. I saw that. Um, limited Wesley. Limited Wesley, yes. Very limited Wesley. No Deanna L- Troy. Limited uh, Crusher, too. Yes, very little. Was she only in that scene with Wesley? Yeah. Oh, wow. 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 Wowzers. Wowzers. I like this episode. It was, I thought it was good. I, I enjoyed it. Was, it. Uh, probably the most thought-provoking episode yes. we've watched. I yeah. Think, I think we're finally starting to get an episodes for me that I would want to rewatch. Yes. A lot of these early episodes so far, I would not want to rewatch them. I'm good after one take. Some of these I, I could go back and rewatch. Aside from uh, the premiere, Injustice for you. What? You want to rewatch that? No. The, hmm. With the ladies. I mean, <laughs> yes and no. Yeah, I know. I get you. I get you. I get you. Are you showing him a picture of the man's crotch again? Yeah. 
the justice. He, how does he have an any? He that's a vagina. Whoa, that's a camel toe. Whoa, look at that. Is that not? That's a camel toe. That's terrifying. I wonder how they tucked it. I don't. I don't think need. They to, I don't did. need to worry about this. These are important que- questions, Nick. No, it's not. I was very curious. It's not when that epi- I'm like nobody's hung. This is ridiculous. <laughs> worry about these. these are not things that concern me no 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 not at all i mean I... she's got less camel toe than he does my goodness what is happening <laughs> what is happening i don't know all right ladies and gentlemen anything else uh i think i agree with you we're starting to dip our toes into like i was what i was going to say before rob Threw that camel toe into my face. Uh, <laughs> Male cam- camel toe, for the record. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Was that if these two episodes were on TV, I would watch them. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't get bored. Yeah. I wouldn't turn the channel. But I, I think that's the fir- Aside from th- what I was going to say, aside from the premiere, mm-hmm. we've now reached the first The first two episodes I, would, I could say that about. The first duel. Well, and these start to feel like they're finding their footing here, too. Like, these mm-hmm. feel, honestly, Hide and Q feels more like a, a good pilot episode than Encounter at Farpoint to me in some ways. Right. The idea of exploring, you know, what humanity would do if given unlimited power or even in some ways battle exploring his past, not as a... I agree. And so, the the whole trial thing, I think we, we said, was very abrupt. It was just kind of like... I'm here and you're on trial now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is this is all happening very fast. Mm-hmm. This episode seemed like I got a better idea of like what Q was or their the Q's uh meaning for lack of a better word right. or like what what their objective is. That's I think that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um so I could I could see this swap being swapped with the pilot. Yeah. Expanding on this episode for another 40 minutes, another yeah. 40 minutes, which and, you could, you could build in Riker's uh-huh. descent into becoming a God. Yeah. The, 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 that space where things did, ev- did advance very quickly in this episode, you could yeah. stretch out a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I liked it. <sighs> All right. Dead air. Uh, we're going <laughs> to uh, review or I, know I usually fill in that dead air, but today I've let it be. I wanted to see what happened. Let, let it be. be. Hey, let are you be. singing? Rob let... singing a Beatles song. Yeah, he is. And I was. Th- Rob is singing a Beatles song and talk Star Wars today. Wow. To be fair, I use Star Trek to star- talk Star Wars. That's a good point. But still, I would love to see future world at Disney World. Not only Trek. did he talk Star Wars and the Beatles, and now it won't count after this. He didn't badmouth either one of them. Nope. But now it won't count if you do. It won't count. Yep. Because it seems like... Beatles was, are overrated. Your face is overrated. Your butt face. <laughs> Beatles are more Let's overrated rate these Star episodes. Let's rate these episodes. <sighs> the battle. Picard flashes back into the past of his time for 22 years on his starship. Uh, what do you rate it, gentlemen? I'm going to give this one a five. Joe gives a five. I'm going to do a four five. A four five. Nick gives this one a six, actually. I enjoyed this episode hey. a little bit. I enjoyed hey. it. A season one six is like a 12. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah it is. It is. Hide and cue. I'm going to go 5.5. Five five. 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 I'm going to go six again. And two sixes for me. So, yeah. We're trending up, boys. I know. <laughs> We're trending up. We're going from abysmal, unwatchable to this is okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take it. Not but, unwatchable. And we said five was average. Here's what's, yeah. Here's what's so crazy is we haven't even gotten to the IMDb average worst episode of this season yet. There's the Really? Yes. It's not Code of Honor or Justice? Uh, so um, Code of Honor was bad. Oh, I lied. Second word. Okay, Code of Honor, IMDb rated a 5.1, but there's one that's later on. High. There's one that gets that's rated a 5. High. Well, for IMDb, that's actually extremely low. For IMDb, um, there's one later on that's a 
And those there's only two five episodes in the whole series. Wow. Or actually, that probably might probably the whole series. That might be right. It might be right, actually. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at. Oh wow, Battlestar Galactica ratings. Look at that. Mm. Oh my gosh. Except for there's the show stinks. Yeah, it does. All Nine. right. So I mean, <laughs> we're getting there, gentlemen. We're getting to some enjoyable trek. And next week we've got the Haven and the Big Goodbye. Two episodes coming up. Next it's over. Week. <laughs> no, it's not over. Oh, no, so it. we got a while. We got a while. We got a long while. We got a long road getting from there to here. All right. Uh, Kill me now. We got a long road, but. Our time is getting near. Drawing near. Drawing near. Let's Nailed go. It. I can see myself flying in the sky. All right, hit the music. The hit the sky. music. Yeah, Kill I, can't, me. I can't reach it. 734-494-0980. Give us phone calls, folks. We'd love to hear from and you. And text. Yeah, we'd love it. Where can you find us on Twitter, Joe? At Cardassians Pod. We are about to record a Patreon. We are. And can we tell them what the Patreon is? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be the, a banger. This is the only, the only the content you'll get from this show. <laughs> We're doing an Apple taste testing. You heard it here first. <laughs> We're doing an Apple taste testing. And this is it going to be ridiculous. You know it is. Tune in oh to God. Patreon. We'd love to have you. But at, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Nick, Rob, and, and, Joe. and Joe. This is Rob. We love you all. Have a good rest of the day. Bye.